This morning, a towering new biography of one of the most famous writers in American history. Philip Roth's professional and personal life are ripe for examination. And Blake Bailey has done it in riveting fashion, documenting a career that spans six decades, including a long list of novels that described and defined our nation from the years after World War II all the way up to the 21st century. We sat down with Bailey after he turned in one of the most anticipated biographies in years. Nobody really knows about Philip's life. He kept a very low public profile. Philip did not allow personal questions during interviews. And I come along and he says to me, ask me anything you want. From a seemingly normal middle-class Jewish upbringing in Newark, New Jersey, Philip Roth would go on to mine works of fiction that became sensations. The breakthrough came in 1959 with Goodbye Columbus, which won Roth the National Book Award when he was just 27. In 1969, Portnoy's complaint about the sexual fantasies and proclivities of a young bachelor became a runaway bestseller and turned Roth into a global celebrity. He created an alter ego, Nathan Zuckerman, his main character in four straight novels. Later, another series, American Pastoral, I Married a Communist, and the human stain. If you're looking for sympathy, uh, you come to the wrong place. I am. The human stain was made into a movie with Anthony Hopkins and Nicole Kidman, one of the many times Roth's fiction was put to film. Freeze! Philip, move! You're in the way! Philip! Most recently, it was an HBO show based on his 2004 book, The Plot Against America. It is not between Charles A. Lindbergh and Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It is between Lindbergh and war. This will put it in a nutshell. In 2006, the New York Times canvassed 200 uh, critics and scholars to name the best American novel of the last 25 years, okay? On the final list of 22 novels, six were by Philip Roth. Now, bear in mind that 25-year period from 1981 to 2006 was less than half of Philip's overall career. And there were plenty of books after 2006, too. So it is an astonishing career. But as Bailey writes about extensively in his engrossing new book, Philip Roth, The Biography, Roth's personal life was just as scandalous as his books. He said to you, you don't have to rehabilitate me, just make me interesting. Don't rehabilitate me, just make me interesting. And then when someone who he thought might say unsympathetic things about him talked to me, <laughs> I would immediately get a memo. <laughs> of course. Telling me all the things that that person is likely to get wrong. Roth's first wife, Maggie Martinson, almost wasn't. Roth was in the process of leaving Martinson, who battled alcoholism and mental illness, when Martinson, in one of the most scandalous episodes in American literary history. She takes a jar, goes to Tompkins Square Park, finds an obviously pregnant woman, and pays two or three dollars for her urine in the jar and persuades Philip that she's pregnant and he marries her. That incident, I think, may have defined his life more than anything else. Absolutely defined his life. Um, he, Chekhov said, I had to squeeze the surf out of me drop by drop. And Philip said, I had to squeeze the nice Jewish boy out of me drop by drop. So I would never be victimized that way again. Roth was both a victim and a man who could victimize. After eventually divorcing Martinson, who later died in a car crash, he went on to have a long relationship with and married actress Claire Bloom. The affairs Roth carried on while he and Bloom were together were exposed in Bloom's 1996 memoir, Leaving a Doll's House, which badly tarnished Roth's reputation. Philip's a flawed human being. He kept up a florid love life behind Claire's back for almost 20 years, but he was not this sinister Machiavellian figure bent on persecuting her, which is the basic tenor of her memoir. And indeed, Claire often has said in public interviews that her relationship with Philip Roth was the most wonderful of her life. Was he a misogynist? It's complicated. I know what Philip would say. Because he, he would often, say no. He often said it to me. He would say, it's ridiculous. You know, he said, I've had lifelong friendships with in intellectual women. 
That said, Philip did not have a monogamous bone in his body. Following the Bloom book, Roth continued churning out fiction into his late 70s and only retired from writing in 2012. He died in 2018 and spent a good part of his final years trying to shape his legacy. That included talking in uncomfortable detail with Bailey and leaving his fortune to the Newark Public Library. A large collection of his books and personal items will eventually be displayed in the new Philip Roth room. The library should be able to operate for decades in good health thanks to his gift. Not far away near an intersection that now bears his name, Roth's childhood home. It's interesting to see, I mean, I didn't realize it was a historic site. Uh, yes, that went up uh, in October of 2005 on Philip Roth Day in Newark. Um, and it begins, it says, Philip Roth, one of the greatest writers of the 20th and 21st centuries. Of course, all that was written by Philip himself. <laughs> of course it was. Of course it was. But the scope and skill involved in Bailey's biography, which took him almost 10 years to research and write, is a marvel to read. How do you think this book will change the opinion of Philip Roth? I think Philip himself would have liked the book. I think that, that parts of it, obviously, would have made him extremely uncomfortable and embarrassed. Um, but for the most part, I think a very touching um, human being uh, emerges from that. Um, I certainly felt very tenderly toward Philip, but it was impossible not to feel tenderly toward Philip if you knew him well. If an eight to 900 page book can be scimulating, uh, this one is. At times, really? at times it, I mean, some of the personal details reads like a high-end soap opera <laughs> almost, but hats off to Blake Bailey, who, as we said, devoted nearly a decade of his life to this, and you see it on these pages. I love that he donated the money yes. to the public library there. So important to keep that. And that legacy will be kept alive for generations yeah. to come. Newark's on a comeback. That's right. <laughs> right there.